What's up, Internet? You're tuning into episode 60 of Nintendo Noise, Flip Screen Games Weekly Nintendo Podcast. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined as always by my very good friends and co-hosts, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Mr. Chewy Plays. Goodbye, goodbye. And Miss Sierra Plus Ultra. Forget about it. Oh, amazing. You gotta lock that in. Locked in. That's yours. <laughs> Wait, forever? It's just it's, it's, it's Occasion. This is a special <laughs> Mario themed episode. Forget about it. <laughs> no, I say I'm we also lock it realizing in. Oh, no. as, as soon as you said 60, I was like, oh man, we've got to do a Nintendo 64 episode. Oh, soon. yeah. That's oh, my God. God. We know which episode, number that yeah. is. Shoot. Yeah. And I know exactly which number it is. It's going to be one when Pete's not here. No. no. Damn it. No. Oh, Damn it. I missed so the Game sad. Boy episode. Now I'm going to miss the N64 <laughs> episode. Come on. We'll have to do Maybe a we'll retro do Nintendo. 63.5 while you're away, and then 64 can be when you get back. That's great. I mean, you know, honestly, Steve, that would be perfect, because since we had to skip flip screen games this week, they're finally the same number again, and I'm so happy about that. So what better time than now to fuck up the numbering all over yeah. again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good God. We can't win. We can't win. Uh, except, I gotta say, this week feels like a bit of a win, because uh, we were able to time the show with two Nintendo Directs today, uh, one Pokemon presentation at a Nintendo Direct. So, uh, jam-packed show for you today. Of course, we're going to be talking about the latest slash potentially last trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And then, of course, the, the topic on everyone's lips, the uh, first ever trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie. We're going to talk all about it. Uh, we've, we've got lots of takes for you. How hot they are, I guess you'll have to wait and find out. Uh, but before we get into all that, let me remind you that this week's episode of Nintendo Noise is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of October. They are, of course, Christian Oliveria, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Asobi, Mary Berry, Wakahula, and Zaid Ida. Thank you all so much for your support over on Patreon.com slash games. Y'all are the realest to the real, and we appreciate your support of this show and all of our sister shows. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us if you want to find your way to the patreon to become a producer if you want to get a bunch of other perks and goodies the way to find links to all that stuff flipscreen.games that's the website go and engage however you choose to we appreciate you tuning in and if you did tune into last week's show like i said uh we are doing our patron suggested topic on video game collectibles unfortunately that uh show has been postponed because uh steve unfortunately had a seizure earlier in the week that kind of messed up our schedule a little bit for a couple days so uh we've we've booted that episode to next week so a couple of you have already gotten in your collectibles uh and stories and all that stuff so if you haven't already make sure you write in and send me a picture of your favorite collectible in your video game collection all right so i think there's a there's a question to be had here right in the document i have pokemon first mario for the main event are we good with that or do we want to start yeah. with mario yeah, do, it, do it that way around in that order yeah yeah okay. all right that sounds good <laughs> so we got a another uh another extended look at Pokemon today, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, it's a 14-minute video uh, called Jump Into a Palladian Journey, and it is, I would say, uh, the deepest dive we've gotten so far with Pokemon, right? Like, it definitely... Um, there was a good mix of new information, like, totally new information, and, like, pretty significant follow-ups on what we saw last time, um, which I think... Has worked well for me, this drip feed. You know, I, I over the last three generations, we've seen them take a lot of different approaches between, like, just dropping a ton of stuff on Twitter, like, every day versus, like, you know, some of these more kind of focused um, presentations. And um, I, I've been pretty happy with the way that they've been drip feeding the information so far here. Um, but the way that they kind of frame things this time around was interesting. They kind of gave you four different player characters and just followed you going through um, a subset of things that you could potentially do in the game. Right. And that's like exploring the three major storylines as well as the multiplayer stuff. So we kind of got a good, a good um, bite into each one of them. 
Uh, and, you know, we, we did ha- do a whole episode just, I think, like two or three weeks ago about, like, the three major stories themselves. So I won't talk ab- about what those are. I'm assuming you already know those framing devices. I want to try to focus more in on the new information. Um, but for Chewy and Sierra, because I know Steve at this point is checked out as a Pokemon fan. He's decided <laughs> he, he has accepted that, that it's just not for him and that uh, ho- we'll, we'll see. Maybe yeah. he... Maybe he drinks well, the Kool Aid again. I never know with you. you know, but I, I, I was always taught when I was a kid, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. And this trailer very much cemented that mentality. <laughs> for me. So I'm going to be quiet for a while because, because I have nothing nice to say. <laughs> Fair enough, buddy. Now I mean, you, Pokemon's huge. You, you, you can bash on it. This, it's funny. Can we do a hater segment? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I think uh, I think I'm gonna hate on it enough for 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 Steve. <laughs> I gotta say though, like even even not just like the hate on the game, there was some so, some weird bits in the trailer. I like I don't know if you guys caught it at like around a minute twenty seven. They've like put you can see the Japanese text in the background, and they've like put the English over the top of it. I'm like. Why is the game not finished? No, like, this is what? definitely footage from before the game was finished. You know, that's the thing because yeah. it's like whenever the the timeline these things are made on for them to have a fifteen minute vertical slice of the game, they must have made this forever ago. You know, so I'm sure the game it looks a lot different now than, um, and like it will look different when we get our hands on it than what we're seeing here. Even though this is so close to release at this point, but I think that's just kind of the name of the game with these things at this point. Um, but I, I definitely like, there was a, a couple moments where I was like, oof, wow, some of these, some of these shots are framey, you know? And that's one of those things where it's like, mm-hmm. how much of that will make it to the final version of the game? It's tough to say. Well, and I want to know, Chewy, were you on veg, were you on vegetable watch? I know we've been on vegetable watch <laughs> for the farming games, but my God, I think we need to expand it to food watch because the food in this, this game, it's not looking so hot, my friend. The, the shadows are totally missing. Where was it? What was going on? <laughs> Looks like Job <laughs> Simulator is what I said on uh, Twitter. <laughs> that sandwich was just like, I, I didn't understand the physics going on with anything they placed on it. <laughs> I, was so confused. I was like, I, okay, this is not the cooking mama that I asked for. Why, why are you eating it? <laughs> so there we go. We got our hater segment out of the way, okay? Yeah, I'm done. Now you you like just I un- understand these games are extremely popular and beloved by many. Is that just not for me? So I'm happy for you lot to enjoy it. That's good. Well, you you said yeah. we let you say your piece, you know. So for the the two of you, then where what was your like? I guess initial reaction to this trailer. And let's start with Sierra because I know this one was a surprise for you. Uh, you didn't yeah. know it was coming until you caught it this morning. So there are things I liked and there are things I did not care about. Um, <laughs> well, I, I feel like this is the trailer that finally cemented like those catching mechanics in Arceus are gone. They're not coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's and, that's safe to say. <sighs> Why would the you introduce part about that game to a mainline game and then fucking get rid of it? That makes me so mad. Like. They're... Make the whole player base fall in love with it, and then it's gone. It's like, this is the beauty of them developing uh, two major games at the exact same time and being able to learn nothing from the fan feedback, right? It's like, why are you doing it this way? Like, why yeah. is this game coming out this year? I know. Like, if if what it took to get the catch mechanics in Scarlet and Violet meant, like, finding out, oh, they liked that shit, we gotta push development to the next year great fine i do not care i have millions of other games i need to play but this is what we're getting i guess um had they even revealed the that scarlet and violet were a thing before legends came out no yeah Yeah, they could have just stayed quiet yeah that's the thing is it just it just it didn't need to come out this year right it could have very easily been delayed to even the same window that arceus came out Right, yeah. like eh, next year, and gotten a couple more months, you know, under the of development, it would have been at least, you know, two, three more months, I guess. Um, I don't know. Get spring like, uh, and game. that would have still got you in the same financial year as well. 
Yeah. Because like their financial year ends in like March. So they would have still hit that same financial year that this really seeing currently. It would have had a couple few more months to, to kind of cook. And I have a feeling some of this stuff's not in there at launch because there's like a little star asterisk at the bottom on some of the sections that says requires software update. So whether that's a day one patch that it requires or whether that's coming further down the line, I don't know. Mm. But yeah, I, I I will very much miss if I do decide to play this game, certainly all <laughs> stuff. Because like, that for me was like, it was such a killer feature just being able to see all the Pokemon in the overworld and just be like, oh, there's a shiny over there, or oh, there's a Pokemon I need to catch there, and you can just you can just see them. It was great. I guess they thought, oh, we'll introduce auto battling, and everyone's gonna be crazy about that. And it's like, I think I can see it'll be really good for utility. I'm not in love with it yet, but maybe I will like it the more I play the game. I can definitely see the appeal of it. Like when they first announced it, I was like kind of, what does that actually look like in practice? Right. And like mm -hmm. seeing it in this trailer, I think really did um, contextualize it for me in a way that felt meaningful where it's like, okay, like <clears throat> how quickly they seem to end makes it feel like it will potentially fulfill a similar role to the way that catching did in like creating a loop um right. but ah yeah it's like i i definitely am bummed to see that functionality gone because i think yeah. that was such a such a major part of the appeal of rcs right what about you chewy i mean kind of on that point it feels like arceus what they did was they made kind of I'd say at this point a point a very worn out and boring feature of the game fun and exciting like the catching stuff I was like great gotta make sure I don't know some it's helpful if I have somebody with false swipe that can get them down to like one sure. HP and yeah. then just throw things you know like they're just like a lot of boring mechanical things to catching Pokemon where it's like all right get them down to a sliver of health give paralyze them do, give them some sort of status effect and then catch them and this one it was like okay it, it's like they took both games and they're like all right let's experiment with changing up catching in this one and battling in this one and this one it feels like we're just not very confident in fun battles in creating fun battles so let's just have players be able to skip them by with these this auto battle thing because there's going to be a lot of them that I don't... And, and i mean uh, you know, I, I get what you're saying, uh, but like, I feel yeah. like when you're talking about using it to clear out like low level interactions, like rather than grinding I'm about like, yeah, I guess what I'm saying specifically is like, I feel like they had the opportunity to play with some of the more grindy aspects of Pokemon and make them more exciting, like Pokemon uh, uh, catching bit of a grind kind of boring not it, same thing over and over the battles i'm like the battles are fun but battling 50 million geodudes to raise your defense stat is like it, it's a pain it's and less like, than ideal. Uh, what if the battles were more fun you know what if they were more <laughs> exciting and this uh, this is uh, this feels to me like them saying like we can't make them more fun or more exciting they're going to be the same battles it just here's a way to make them faster yeah, I don't know. You know what I, mean? I, I guess it's tough for me because, like, I genuinely think battling is, like, the thing that makes Pokemon worth playing, you know, mm -hmm. um, is the battle system. And, like, I think the reason it's not more entertaining is because the AI is not tuned up enough, you know? Yeah. Um, like, right now, I on my Steam Deck, um, I've been playing uh, this r ROM hack that came out, I think, last year, maybe it was 2020, called Radical Red. And it's literally fire red, but it's updated to have like literally every generation of Pokemon up to Arceus. Um, like all those Pokemon are gettable. And it has like every single trainer that you interact with, wild Pokemon you interact with, has AI that replicates competitive play. So like I literally am 14 hours into the game and I only have two badges. Which is insane. Um, <laughs> Should be halfway through by now. And I've caught like 200 species of Pokemon already. It's amazing. And I haven't even gotten to Vermilion yet. Like I'm, I'm on my way to Vermilion City. So it's like, I don't, I really truly don't think that like the core 
gameplay of Pokemon is the problem, right? Like, I think the battles are extremely rewarding when they're actually a challenge, but they're not, rarely, if ever, right? And mm -hmm. when it comes to, like, grinding... I, I, I don't know. Like, the, the battles out in the wild were the bit that Arceus replaced, and it felt like they replaced it with something meaningful and, and fun. Like I, I enjoyed the running around, but you still had the battles, the tradi like kind of traditional battle system. Yeah. In like battling with trainers or battling like I guess like they're not gyms in that, but battling with other people and other NPCs. Like you could still have the best of both worlds. It feels like the auto battle is just the system that replaces the the wild Pokemon that you would battle with. Yeah, I in, don't I, in it's... this game. It's just, it's tough, because it's, like, I can see the appeal of that in terms of, like, long-term play, right? Like, what like what Chewie described of, like, oh, like, I don't want to grind out, uh, like, these EVs or something like that, and being able to do that quickly, right? Is, like, that's, like, a nice quality of life thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't enhance the fun in the way that, like, catching did in Arceus. But I, I would argue that, like, what you're saying about getting the best of both worlds, I don't agree, because, like, there's not nearly enough battles in that game. There's, like... 20 in like the whole game you know? I, I feel like you could have had the best of both worlds if you had the catching yes. of the wild pokemon <laughs> but you also had like youngster timmy wants to fight you and he like throws his pokemon at you and then you're in a battle that you didn't really want to engage in and that battle's actually meaningful and fun and you know yeah. engaging i think you could have the best of both worlds. yeah absolutely with Arceus, there just wasn't enough there wasn't enough npcs out in the wild it was all just pokemon everywhere and, like, that was why I was hoping there was going to be DLC. It was like, oh, can we get, like, a battle tower or something where, like, I can go battle with all these Pokemon that I spent all this time catching now? And I mean, there kind of is at this point. There are, like, uh, if you go to the dude. that little gym yeah. section, like, they have a bunch of different battles there now, and they're pretty yeah. difficult from what I've heard. But... Yeah, I, I went back but and yeah, did them. I mean, they're but fun. If, but playing the main game, like, you're right. There, there aren't really too many trainer battles or anything that really challenges you in that way. It's so. deeply frustrating to have it have to feel like it's one or the other, you know? And, mm -hmm. like, I don't think that, like, the quick battles are, like, a good replacement for the overworld catching because it's not... I feel like that feels more like a quality of life thing for, like, people who want to, like, do competitive play or grind or whatever but don't want to go through, like you said, like, a million screens of fighting the same Pokemon and just one-shotting them and doing it again and doing it again and doing... Like, that's not fun, you know? But, like, it is important for things that exist in, like, post-game, right? And, like, I feel like I could see the value of that and being like, oh, that will be something that I'll get use out of, but, like, it's not, it's not a viable replacement for catching because that actually fundamentally changes like the way you play the game like Arceus was way more akin to like Pokemon Go than it was to a standard Pokemon game you know mm -hmm. but with yeah. Dark Souls yeah <laughs> it was great <laughs> I loved it like I you know I, I and I hope we get more of it but I also would really love to see this game you know be able to learn from that rather than just feel like it's it's the classic like two steps forward one step back right because there's yeah. a lot here that I do think looks good and like it sucks because like I feel like we're coming off as very negative about it right now but like <laughs> I am excited about how much there seems to be able to do that actually feels like worth doing you know and like that is exciting uh, I think you hit the nail on the head though they obviously got the design doc in they figured out the spec for the game long before Arceus was even released and that's why we don't have any of that stuff in here and I think they weren't sure with that that's why it's got the Legends moniker they just yeah. weren't sure if that was going to become the future of the franchise or if it was just a gamble that was going to pay off and it clearly did pay off it's the best ranked po rated Pokemon game in a very long time but yeah but, you know I, I hope there's enough here, enough here to, to draw people in though for Pokemon fans like there seems to be a lot of gimmicks cram packed with gimmicks from an outsider looking in like what yeah like the thing where they got all that those sunflowers and they got it to like chase after them and like i, I can't remember what that was called like gym test it's the gym test like, it's yeah. fun, like all this yeah. it's just a mini game find all the sunflowers and they like yeah. chased you and then there's the the food thing that we spoke about already 
And then there's the crystal crystallized. I don't think the food thing is as weird as people are making it out to be. Like it's it's ugly. Don't get me wrong, but that as like a a concept, like it makes a ton of sense. And there's always been an element of like feeding your Pokemon food to boat boost. Like we had the Mm -hmm. poffins and poffins, yeah, and all that shit. Like as far back as Gen three, you know. I just love that they're not trying Mm -hmm. to make it like. Poke, puffin, poke, poke. It's it just like make a sandwich. Make a big ass sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make a fat I, fucking I, sub. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it's basically the Nintendogs portion of Pokemon. Yeah. I think of it. It's oh, just yeah, like here, here's the place. <laughs> <laughs> you can the, kick a ball. Have, like different iterations of it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's this is the perfect like time for them to have like a mobile app where I take my Pokemon with me and I fucking do all of that shit on my phone. Dude, I and know. I'm training them I up have, on I my have phone. No interest in that. And then I, br- and then I bring it back and they're like trained up. No. Because I really feel like that's exactly what that's exactly what Sega managed to do with the bloody Chow Garden in Sonic Adventure. That's not what this and I is. Take though. those with me, like on, on like the GBA and. And like I could like uh, you're telling me I ca- I can't construct the sandwich on my phone and feed that to the Pokemon instead. Yeah, but why like, would why you want to do that? Be able to do that on the go when you're when you're like bored and you're filling time. Because that's not because that's not what the purpose of it is. It's like the whole point of it is like again, and it's like it, the, that that's t- a totally separate thing. Like this isn't a mini game that exists to be a mini game, right? Like I mean, I guess it does literally, but like the benefit of it is that it gives you like um you know uh like boosts when you're out in the wild doing things right like it's like oh like you're gonna get exp yeah, bo- boosts great, when you're I, out there i feel like yeah yeah but i think you could still do that and incorporate it into a mobile app or incorporate it into something else that isn't part of the the main game so when i'm not playing pokemon like when i'm playing pokemon i want to i'm there and i want to play pokemon but when I'm out and about and like, you know, I'm on the sofa and I'm watching TV, why can't I just be like constructing a sandwich on my phone or if I'm like waiting at the doctors, at, at, you know? I, mean, I feel I, like I'm a lot Steve. of these mini games could I come with, with you. Steve. I am 100% with Steve and that's because I carry my Poke Walker around with me everywhere. My little Togepi's in there. <laughs> yeah, but like, dude, it gets experience when you walk around. You can catch Pokemon in this thing. You can find items and stuff. And I'm just like... Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they nailed it. It's literally they the same thing as Xenoblade, so though. Like, this is not, it's not, I don't know. Like, I I guess you could do that, but that sounds awful. Like, that sounds like an See, awful experience. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's fun. I think it's cute. You get a little Pokeball device. It was optional, I guess, but it's that. like, I, I never used that shit because I thought it was so, like, annoying to be like, I don't want to, like, go through the trouble of being, like, it's the same reason I don't use the app for Splatoon, right? It's, like, I don't want but, but, uh, to uh, right. I'm imagining a world where it's good. I'm not imagining a world where it's, like, the Nintendo Switch Online app. I'm imagining a world where I open it, it's connected to my account, all the Pokemon I was I, I'd already caught are there and they're synced to the cloud. Oh, they're already in my Pokemon home. Wow, I don't have to do that and remember to put them in there anymore. Great. And then they're in there so I can feed them fucking sandwiches and like <laughs> do some sunflower tests and like all this other sh- shit that I can do. <laughs> well, somebody please let me feed my Pokemon sandwiches when I'm on <laughs> <Honestly>, in Miami. <laughs> I, would, I would love it if it were part of the little Switch app. Uh, oh. That that's such an easy, <laughs> convenient place to go to it. And honestly, Pete, you should use the Splatoon three Splatnet thing because really there's a bunch of clothing the on there. Thing. I know, but I don't want to. I don't want to but fucking there's... open an app to do a thing in a video game. That sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You're ever just away from your Switch, and you're like, oh, I just want to go check what's in this little shop and order something for later. I, 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 guess, I, I wish they like, used it better for Animal Crossing. Your Splatoon, but like, your Switch is a handheld. Like, why do I need? What are you telling me? I'm like, you know what? For all those times that I'm not at- sometimes right. Like, you've got to think of it in the mentality of these are like games where you do like dailies, right? And like sure. Animal Crossing is a perfect example because you always wanted to log on to see if you had the the latest KK slider. Record Pokemon, it's not like that. Day. It's a it's a JRPG. <laughs> but it could be. 
I guess, I guess. Be things you're gonna do daily, like you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna make another sandwich today. I wonder what delicious <laughs> filling my food was. You eat. guys are so focused on this fucking sandwich. Like, this game would be better if I had to open up an app on my phone to play the sandwich mini game instead. That makes no fucking sense. Like, you know how this? You know what would make this game better if it was more obtuse? If it was harder to play? If it took more effort to play? That would be better. <laughs> Look, I, I, how many know, they, times they, have you ordered an app? Sierra, am I taking Pokemon am I taking Pokemon crazy pills, Pokemon. Sierra, or are they are they Pokemon. are they making sense to you, or am I like? It all. I'm sorry. I'm such I'm such a Switzerland ass person. It all makes sense to me, and, and <laughs> right now my brain is just like Pokemon Subway. <laughs> <laughs> I am just oh, they need to do a tie-in. Oh. Need there needs to be a Pokemon Subway oh collaboration now. Maybe I will finally step yeah. foot in a Subway for the first time in my life. You couldn't pay me to go back to but, a Subway. You know, they just <laughs> they just smell like salt. That's Listen. what they smell like. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that shop. This is Nintendo's version of achievements. Just everything on the app that you don't want to do, you do it there. Wow. I've never. I don't think I've said the word sandwich so much in like five. Look, minutes. people down. <laughs> people are gonna download Pokemon games to like help them sleep, help them brush their teeth. Wait. I really think game that still doesn't exist. <laughs> no, it doesn't exist still. I could see them doing something to to like help benefit that the the game they're playing, like benefit the the Pokemon in the actual game that they're playing as like a companion. Thing. doesn't have to be the only way to do it just like a an extra doesn't have thing. to be a sandwich game <laughs> <laughs> doesn't no, it doesn't have to be like sandwich constructor or sandwich so, simulator 22 i'm or showing anything like that i'm showing the sandwich mini game right now and i gotta say this ham is like the least appetizing food i've ever seen animated in I, my entire life <laughs> just come just having come back from spain I saw sandwiches. <laughs> I saw sandwiches everywhere, and I get why. I like saw it in the trailer. I was like, oh yeah, mm, that's why they're doing it. I love but that Sierra's like, I've been to Spain. Great sandwich culture. These do not look like. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the does not look like Chris. Does not look like fresh Iber Iberico, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess. I nah, guess and why is there two characters. two types of tomatoes as well? Like who, that was who, weird. Who, yeah, who cherry was tomatoes. <laughs> All right, it's both, like we got though. the beef tomatoes and we got the cherry ones. Like why? <laughs> Variety and lettuce. You know. So what else is there in this game? What else? What I don't know. I I said I said we we said that we we had a whole thing about how Steve was gonna be over his hater segment, and then he fucking co-ops my segment for fifteen minutes to bitch about sandwich mini games on mobile. I wasn't. I was saying it would have been a good idea as a mobile game. It's or it's on you. This is on you. No, it isn't. I asked you. No, you're a fucking. You're a, you're a criminal, Steve. I gave you a chance. I was like, oh, what 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 sticks out to you is blow, and then you go on for twenty fucking minutes about sandwiches. Say blow. I say gimmicks. Okay, I'm sorry, gimmicks. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to miss. This is a gimmick with the with the plastic bread. And the like Steve, condiments it's with no shadows. Like I got I dude, you are so showing your JRPG ignorance to be like, what a gimmick. This is in like every JRPG. It's in Breath of the Wild, it's in fucking Xenoblade. It's like this is not a groundbreaking thing to be like, oh, it's a minigame where you cook food. It's like that's just it's just it's so normal. This was the most normal thing to zero in on. <laughs> you fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right i don't even know i don't even know where to go from here we're like so we've 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 uh, totally gone through like right, each okay segment. what else can you do what else can you do on the picnic pete this, that's not just the only thing you do there you're right there are some other things at the picnic you can discover eggs which is cool you know <laughs> find some pokemon eggs <laughs> It would be really great if I had to do that in an app and then take 20 minutes transferring <laughs> it over the Nintendo Switch's shitty uh, internet connection app, though. That would be really fun. <laughs>
<laughs> that would be good. Uh, I think aside from that, we caught it up. You know, you the other like make sandwiches. You can play you with make a ball. Sandwiches out of the Pokemon eggs. No, Pokemon hatch from the eggs. Or okay. Although I don't know where I don't know where this ham is coming from. <laughs> Take that egg and crack it over a nice fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lechonk is where the ham came from. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty dark. So, imagine if you could slice a Lechonk. Oh, my God. Wait, when they when you go and you get the ham, are they going to... going to run on a spit. It's like yeah. a whole roast. Yeah, when you go and get roast. the ham, where does the ham come from? Are they going to tell you where the ham comes from? So you know how you can, like, find Lord. stuff in the overworld? It would be really funny if when you defeated Pokemon, they dropped stuff, and when you defeat LeChonk, he drops ham. It's like, uh, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have pigs. They don't have pigs. Plenty of pig Instead Pokemon. Of exactly. It's all Pokemon. So you're eating a Pokemon. I don't know. Sure. It's interesting. Tepig. One thing like we've been eating Pokemon for years because, yeah. like, you used to in, 100%. In Pokemon Go. We sent them back to the professor, and it just he just turned them into candy for us. It was great. Candy, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What he means is he fucking ground. <laughs> he, he, it's like it's like you know those uh, those big machines that they use and they smash cars and turn them into a little cube. It's like that. Yeah, yeah. Pretty bad. Pretty bad. <laughs> So, uh, the other thing I did notice in the picnic section was, like, it did kind of make it look like the legendary who you're riding is, like, part of your squad. I couldn't tell if there were six other Pokemon on the screen or not. But he's, like, there hanging out doing all the activities and everything. Yeah, I didn't look closely enough, but that surprised me, too. I was like, so are we going to be able to, like, battle with this one? Is it just, like, from the get-go we've got a legendary? Because that, that seems too much that's too much power for one small 10 year old child to handle <laughs> yeah you, know? you would think so <laughs> yeah. uh in that in that section they also showed off some of the like character customization and you know it's definitely mm -hmm. like looks deeper again right rcs i think was probably the mm -hmm. deepest control you had had over your character before and this was looks like it's even a little bit more um yeah which is pretty cool i like this one I hope they don't charge you just to go in and see the hairstyles anymore. Yeah, that's that that's been the case with every like hair thing in Pokemon thus far, where it's like, you want to change your hair, you got to pay up first, and then it didn't, you get to you get to change. I, it didn't look that way because like it showed them cycling through and like clicking on a bunch of different ones to like preview it. So I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of like more like Animal Crossing, where you can be like, these are all the things I'm going to pick, and then walk out, and they'll be like, okay, now we'll charge you. Mm -hmm. I hope it's like that. But it was That's cool because, like, change. you had control over stuff, like, as minute as, like, the <clears throat> shape of your eyes and stuff like that, which is something that, like, they've definitely never done before. Yeah. It was always kind of like, okay, there are uh, four skin tones, and that's that's what you got. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be blonde or brunette? It's like, um, okay. <laughs> so that's definitely cool, too. I'm glad to see them kind of, like, continue down that, that path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm... Going through here, trying to pick out the stuff that I think is most worth touching on. Um, like, one of the things that we didn't know for sure, I don't think, but they did confirm here today, was that any Pokemon can have any Terra type for terrestrializing. Terastrali Jesus, that's so hard to remember how to say that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which was something like they had given us examples of Pokemon having different types before. Like, they there was the Eevee that could be water or grass, but they didn't actually, like clarify how that would be determined does every pokemon have one or two like how does that end up working so now we do know that any pokemon can be caught in any terra type and the way that you'll kind of see that in the overworld is like a glowing pokemon um that'll like that you can like see from far away and approach you know intentionally um which is cool um so it's like i guess kind of like an evolution of like you know the way that we interact with shinies in the overworld to some degree um, and then also, again, this is something that, like, I feel like we probably could have figured out from context before, but, um, it solidified it in my mind anyway, was that the way that you can tell what type they are is based on the hat, because there's, like, different, you know, like, the water one or whatever, like, I was kind of initially thinking it was, like, per Pokemon or whatever, and seeing it now, it's like, oh, right, okay, this is clearly how it works, so, like, they had the example of, like, the Jigglypuff with, like, the water spout on the top of the head, so we got that. Um, jumping around a little bit. 
uh, they talked about the the base fighting more and like that I think they kind of clarified like what that actually looks like right where it's like Mm -hmm. it's kind of less of like a boss rush and there is like it's like an overworld thing where there's like multiple uh like Pokemon in the overworld spawning at once and you're kind of it's almost like um like tower defensey in a way it 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 gave me kind of like Pokemon Rumble vibes but sure yeah yeah less control yeah over over how you can you do those battles you know but yeah, I, I, I didn't mind it. I, I think I feel like that was kind of the, more of the look of like, here's what these fast battles look like, you know, where you just send your Pokemon off and do whatever. Yeah, it was interesting but to kind see of like more in like a quick mass little section. I don't know. Yeah, because it's yeah. like in the overworld section where they showed that it seemed like it was more for like utility of like do this battle really quickly or like use them to go grab an item like you could before or whatever shit like that. But like this feels more like it's like oh here like you're gamifying it a little bit you know mm-hmm. i'm interested to see how fun that actually feels right. like is there yeah. like am i micromanaging and like healing them and everything and i have to pay attention because i have three pokemon out and i gotta make sure they're all you know staying healthy and and whatever you know what i mean like how 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 mm-hmm. actively involved are you in that moment to moment versus you know um like just kind of doing it and then getting to the main fight with the the crazy car and everything it, it, it's uh, now I'm remember. It, it, I was thinking Pikmin when I saw that. <laughs> I was like, oh, "Yes, uh, our sure. Pokemon are Pikmin now." Yeah, we just shoot them out there. They attack that enemy. <laughs> I can see that too. Uh, another thing that they showed off that I thought was interesting was uh, a, there's a, te- a TM machine that you can interact like with it. at um, <clears throat> at Pokemon centers, and like this plays into like the collecting things in the overworld, where like you can use them. Uh, as well as like league points that I'm guessing you get from beating gym leaders and stuff like that, um, to craft uh, TMs to like get new moves and everything, which is cool. Like I think that gives me a better idea of like what the purpose of collecting things in the overworld is, right? Like, <clears throat> you know, I like the idea of like that. That feels like that could be an opportunity for a loop that was fun in the way that the loops in Arceus were, right? Where it's like okay, like, it's worth it for me to go and make my fucking stupid sandwich and (laughs) make sure I'm getting extra drops because right now I'm trying to grind out enough to get this TM or whatever. Like, I can, I, I, that seems interesting and I like the idea of having that be something that you control a little bit more rather than just being like, hope you find it in the overworld, you know, because, like, obviously, now that it's open world, it's so much easier to imagine that you're not going to, just come across something like that you know as organically Mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool yeah i think that was a nice surprise because it's like oh like it's not your ability to get tms isn't barred by like how keen you are to explore like little nooks and crannies or like uh like if you have enough money to buy solar beam like you can i'm sure there's like you know like you still have to catch certain pokemon to get certain things but I think it's nice. I, I, I'm looking forward to like seeing how that plays out. I can see that incentivizing you to go to biomes too. Like if it's like, oh, I want icy uh, wind and I have to go to the snow area to find this thing or whatever, right? Like this kind of right. Pokemon drops it, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that'll that'll definitely be cool. Um, they showed a little bit more of the, uh, the, the other side story with like going and like fighting the giant crazy Pokemon and like trying to find the weird food ingredients, which I wonder if you can use those in your sandwiches. That actually, <laughs> that whole plot makes more Probably. sense. I hope you can. <laughs> to be the ultimate mm-hmm. sandwich chef. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that was the secret route for pokemon yeah that's the church route <laughs> you're like i don't care about I being love a that as like a, a pokemon side game i want a pokemon side game where rather than like being the very best pokemon trainer i'm just like the best pokemon chef and i've got to figure out what all the pokemon like to eat yes. and i've got yeah. to construct oh, like the best God. food and like <laughs> i run like a pokemon ki- i guess it's like pokemon cafe mix but like uh, I'm actually different. like doing the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Instead of yeah, well, having we... to connect a bunch of f- fucking little heads. Yeah. Little <laughs> yeah. We we talked about this a, a briefly when Arceus was coming out, where I was like, "Oh, there's this survey squad and this other, you know, there's those three different squads in there." And I was like, "A Pokemon game with like where you can just take on different classes or roles and stuff, and just 
play through the yeah. world completely differently. That sounds pretty appealing. My, I would love to see them do it kind of in the way that like, um, that like Skyrim handles that stuff, you know, where it's like in Skyrim, there's obviously like the main story of like the civil war that's going on, but it's like, you can go and join the companions. You can go join the thieves guild. You can go join the mages college. And like, those are like just totally side things that you can do. And if you do complete them, you get some cool kind of reward that benefits you in the actual main game. Like, I think that would be really sick, right? If it was like, Oh, you can go. Well, there's those side ones, but you've also got like the, the, the choices you have to make like you have to ultimately decide to be this or this and then you like piss off the other side and sure you, you can't do those quests anymore. and like, it's like I, you fail at all these i think that as a thing in pokemon probably doesn't make as much sense just because of like what the world is and like the audience that it, it also is trying to cater to and everything but like I, I don't think it needs to be like so huge and sweeping of like you need to make a world changing decision as much as like it would be cool if like when i went to the the breeder right like there was like oh like there's a side thing where you can like learn to be a pokemon breeder and if you do this whole side quest like you'll get this benefit where like eggs spawn quicker or eggs hatch quicker or, like every pokemon that you hatch has perfect ivs right or like whatever right and give you some material benefit for going through that cool side story and that side content i would do that immediately <laughs> it'd be really nice IV thing alone yeah, yeah. I, I that that would be my dream would would to see like give me options to you know because we've like there's like pokemon rangers and like you know like we know about all these different kinds of yeah. you know it would be cool Those if games were fun too it would be cool if you could like join the bad guys right and be like oh i'm gonna be like a grunt in team rocket and like go like do some you know nasty bullshit for a little bit and then maybe you know eventually they force you to like be a good guy again or whatever right but like just give me some side stuff where i can explore you, more of the to, world like, join to like take him down from the inside kind of thing would be that would be yeah. fun yeah, yeah. Love it. It'd be like the same thing as like the in like Gen Two, where like you and Lance go like sneak in their base and like just fuck everybody up, and it could just be like, nah, like I'm gonna dress like a grunt, and sneak in, and pretend to be one yeah. of them, and see how far you can get before they catch you, you know. And like if you get further, you battle less guys or whatever, you know, stuff like that. It would be fun to see them experiment with some more of those things and give you kind of like more opportunities for like storytelling in the world. Um, so before we put a pin on this, the most important thing. Uh, that happened in this whole thing, I think, was they showed off a new Pokemon who I just love. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Girafferig from uh, Gold and Silver, they show uh, one of the... the 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 Because the whole thing was like, there's these four main characters, right? And one of them trades the Girafferig, <clears throat> we watch it level up, and then it evolves, and it's like, oh boy, like, I, I love this crazy-looking bastard, I love Girafferig, and it is one of those Pokemon that, like, came out in gen 2 and was not much to talk about and it's never gotten a type update or a form or anything and now they're like hey here's a wacky ass evolution like yeah go get it mm -hmm. i love i love it i love it so much very cute very cute i love this pokemon i've always loved giraffe rig too uh always one it's of my so favorites great. but it was not not a great pokemon to use <laughs> no and it didn't evolve so it was it was forever useless, but I used one anyways because I was like, this is the best dang Pokemon I've ever made. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so. For a, gir a for great... giraffe, I think is how you say it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know. Like they were not very creative with the name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same name backwards, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it might be. It is. It's also a palindrome, I mean, yeah. Um, when... What were you going to say? I was gonna. This is a question for everybody. When they come out with like new like Pokemon, like like regional forms, do y'all see it as like, oh, they're running out of ideas, or like, oh, this is just a creative spin on like existing Pokemon? I really like them. Um, I I think I there are a lot of folks I've seen kind of be like, ah, oh, like we're like we've done too many of these now, and like it's getting played out. That's why I asked. I, I don't I don't really agree. You know, I think to me like there are so many Pokemon designs that are like mid, you know, and like they have gone out of their way I think to to add less each generation and not put the pressure to be like we need to come up with a fresh 
150 every time, you know? And I think the generations where they've done less have been better because it's like, I'd rather have 30 or 40 or 50 new Pokemon that fucking slap that we really like and feel like cool, meaningful additions than get, you know, like a ton of new ones that are like whatever. And like for me, I I think the regional variants have been really fun because, you know, there's the ability to like, Context- recontextualize old Pokemon that are popular in cool new ways. There's ways to take old Pokemon and kind of like shine a light on them again and like make them relevant. Like I think about like Farfetch'd and Surfetch'd last generation who like are actually legitimately good Pokemon and like Farfetch'd has almost always been like meme level terrible, you know? And like it was cool to be like, oh, cool, he's like viable now. Like he's back in the conversation in a way he never would have been before. And like I think in the same way that I'm excited about them giving an old Pokemon that I like an evolution that is good, um, I feel kind of the same way about the regional variants where like as long as they're good and they're a cool design, I'm into them. But I also think if they really cared about Pokemon designs, they'd stop turning all the starters into humanoids. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what's up with that. The, the fire, uh... the fire starter to, to weird humanoid like furry um, bait is like I don't. That pipeline is very established. Yeah, if Sprigatito right. stands up on two legs, it's over. It might We're happen. Done. It might happen. That's right. it's, so pro- it's, it's going to. This definitely isn't going to be the last. Pokemon presents because they're going to drop the full evolution line before the game. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm so afraid of that. <laughs> uh... Quaxley, I feel like, is fine because he's already bipedal. So, like, what would they can't really fuck him up that bad? Like, unless they give him, yeah, like, human hands. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have Kirby's feet. No! <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Chewy, what do you about the regional variants? Do you have a a take on that? Oh, the um, I think they're fine. I I think as a concept, I've always like liked them because I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. This is this follows kind of more the real world evolutionary process, right? Some yeah. creature ends up in a different place, evolves according to those places, and so I've never been against them. Um, but I I personally think i'm always down for new pokemon so if they want to give me more sure go for it but but also don't make them all stand on two feet agreed yeah (laughs) i also think it's like when you think about the way that they used to handle that shit too right where it would be like so many generations past there's like here's the pidgey clone right it's a normal bird Mm -hmm. and it's like a pigeon right and it's like we got did we you know like is it better to have pidgey and pete of than to have like two versions of pidgey i don't know right like I know, yeah. right? So. Yeah, and and I think they do a decent job of, like, you know, really researching the area the regions are based off of and making Pokemon around those. So Some of them I are mean, really the Pidgey, great, it, too, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel Wiglet in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> are there, and, and yeah. And I think is, like, the Pidgey clone is, like, there are sparrows and pigeons everywhere in the sure. world where you will go. So, like, there's going to be some normal bird type Pokemon. Yeah, Sierra, in Spain, do they have, like, weird, like, sperm moles? Is that a... Yo, I'm like looking it up right now. But I, I asked, what animal is Wiglet based off of? There is no answer. Like, uh, white beach snakes. <laughs> <laughs> white it... long beach mole. Like, <laughs> it's weird. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's also yeah, wild as it. like fuck that this is the third form of Diglett now. That's crazy. That's right. Why did is it is it a garden eel? Although which is like you a, know what, an underwater thing. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's not even the first What's, one. Uh, slow worms. Um, slow worms. I have the. I firmly believe in the philosophy. If I had to see it, so do you. So yeah. Um, I can attest that is your philosophy. <laughs> so, so have you all? Yeah, I, I did, think I it's a garden eel. Chat. I did yeah. real quick. They're, they're probably based on a garden eel. Uh, real quick, I did want to point out, that. though, I, I thought about this because originally I thought it was weird that Diglett is like, I was like, oh, this is like what they're doing another Diglett. They did that with Meowth, too. There are three Meowths now. So this oh, is. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it's another fun fact. I don't I don't think this means anything, but it is interesting. Uh, in the original Pokedex, D- 
Diglett, Doug Trio, Meowth, and Persian right next to each other. And they're the two sets of Pokemon that have three variants. That's really uncanny. Weird, right? I it's it's. Why. I'm sure it's nothing. I'm sure it means nothing, but it's very interesting. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you just revealed some deep, dark conspiracy that explains the Illuminati or something. Probably. Add the numbers. <laughs> what do they mean? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Watch, you add it up and it's like that's Can the release send me, date. Send like, me a picture. I want I want you to send me a picture of you like the, like that so I can do the, like the numbers meme as like the the like thumbnail for this video, please. Okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Take some screenshots, Steve. Come on. <laughs> oh boy. All right. So uh I don't know. I guess that's it. That's all I got for Pokemon. Now we're gonna move on. This was the most unhinged coverage of a of a trailer that we've ever had, but that's fine. We're gonna move on to another really. Yeah, but the sandwiches. <laughs> Steve, I we swear really to gotta God, stop recording these before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's the issue. Solid now I'm hungry. Steve, Steve <laughs> is the king of being like, all right, I have a hard out, but I am gonna talk about nothing for twenty minutes. Is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> It's the middle of the night, but I do want to waste a lot of time talking about sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, okay. So, uh, moving on to the main event here. Uh, Nintendo has released the first trailer for the Super Mario Brothers movie. It dropped earlier today. Uh, it was a Nintendo Direct as well as a live presentation at New York Comic Con. And uh, I got to say, Sad that I am not at New York Comic Con. This is the first one I am missing in 12 years, um, wow. which is rough. Uh, but shout out to my boys at the Comics Pals. Hope you guys have yes, fun. Yes, Comics Pals! I know uh, they had a great day one already. I know they got some great interviews, so I'm excited to check them out. Uh, go give them a follow. Uh, so, we got a conversation, a little bit of a conversation, between Mario's dad and uh, Chris Melandry from Illumination. And talking about the collaboration between Nintendo and Illumination. And uh, we got a couple pieces of information I thought were interesting to highlight. Um, that next week they're going to complete animation. That scoring is going to be starting next uh, week. And that Koji Kondo, of course, the composer for Mario, um, is, uh, is working closely on the project, which is cool. Uh, and that the movie has been in development for seven years. Not actively, wow. right? They weren't working on it for seven years, but they started the, the conversation between the two companies to do this seven years ago, which is crazy. Just how long it takes for stuff like what this to get done. movie had just come out seven years ago? 20... They, spent... they spent five minutes on the Minions movies. <laughs> Let me see. Did they have a big movie in 2015? Like yeah, like what did what did Miyamo just watch? And he was like, "They're the ones. These are the guys. These are the guys. Um, they're gonna <laughs> see my vision. <laughs> they're the the I minions. Think it's literally, the first right. Minions movie is it? The first yeah, Minions min movie. Minions. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Minions 2015. Wow. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Yeah. Saw, they that was, that like... was what it was then. Yeah, Miyamo oh, went to no. go see that, and he was like, "Yep, yeah, this is it." Miyamoto loves sealed, sealed the fate. Oh my god. <laughs> and then he was like, you know what? Rabbids are a great idea. With I gotta Mario. say. <laughs> I got yes, he was. Yes. It's, it's like fucking wild to me that this entire, like, because I know it's easy to dunk on how much the minions suck now. Despicable Me was a solid movie. In two that was a good movie. You know? And they're just eating a dead corpse into the ground. And it, it's just nuts because, like, they've made so many things since then, and I feel like none of them have hit uh, even close to that level of, like, quality. I like Pets one was pretty good, wasn't it? The that? Secret Life of Pets? I never saw it. I don't know. Yeah. Could have been good. Well, that was good. Anyway. So, Wild, uh, we got conversation from two of the film stars, Chris Pratt. Uh, showed up and it was fucking awkward right like and I know again right it's super easy to meme about how much everybody hates Chris Pratt N removing that removing any bias it was just awkward it was very slow and I was like bro why are you talking like this like <laughs> the real Chris Pratt what do you want about he had to like recount his like vivid memories of when he played Mario Brothers the original arcade three. machine at yeah. the laundromat when he was a child. That's a real thing. Coopers. 
That's a it thing. Was like it was like bizarre though. Like, it sounded like he was doing a William Shatner impression. Oh my god. When yeah. I yeah, it was, was so weird. Kid, I remember stomping and then, Koopas. It's I like, just, I've I seen this guy give an interview this before. Was his lifelong dream. <laughs> because the real Chris Pratt is dead, he's been replaced <laughs> by someone else. Go on, Sierra. Mm -hmm. Tell me, I wasn't Stop. aware of this. <laughs> Who Can we this? get Sierra with the numbers now? <laughs> <laughs> the real Chris Pratt, that is not him. I'm convinced. The that... last time we saw him was in Parks and Rec. The finale and of Parks and Rec. This has not yep. been the same. Yeah. And, and a zygote descended from space, infected his body. <laughs> Okay. And wow. made him an evangelical Christian. Wow. And they forgot to write this one uh, a script as well. So he didn't know <laughs> what to say. When I was... When They're like, I was just, just say this was your lifelong dream, that you really want to be Mario. You, who's Mario? Don't worry. Just You just want to be him. Yep. It's fine. But it's like, that's the thing. Is like, I believe him. Like, I believe that he played Mario and was like, I love Mario. That's a totally... But, like, he sounded like a fucking robot. It was so what? odd. What? Like, he clearly recorded that himself. This is why. It was at his house. Yeah. Like, he... You know he, like, he could have watched it back and been like, oh, this is, like, really awkward. That, I was, do this. that was the best take you got? Like... <laughs> Being a YouTuber, it like he was on a Zoom call, confirmed. and it had that like automatic blurry background filter that they put on when you're on like Zoom calls. Yeah, it looked like that's where he was. It it was it was just so strange. It was so strange, and and then like in contrast, right? We immediately jumped to Jack Black, who's like very just it's the best. Uh, yeah, he's he's charming. Amazing. He's great on camera. He's a natural talker. He's a good vamper. He like. It was fine. It was normal. It was like, this is a normal... And, like, he said a cliche thing about the movie, and it's gonna shake the... It's like, yeah, this sounds like what a person sounds like when they talk about a movie that they're in. <laughs> it was so fucking weird. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, you know, I think I think Sierra's onto something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk about the actual trailer. Right, because now we've actually seen the movie for the first time. It's no longer just uh, a logo and you know memes about how weird it may or may not be. We've actually seen it. My initial reaction, right? Um, I think the animation looks genuinely very good. Um, I feel like the like the representation of of Bowser really really cool. Um, the shot, you know, like. If you're watching on YouTube now, like you're seeing, it's like the whole flying, you know, castle type ship thing, right? He's coming in, he's wrecking house, he's burning down the Penguin's kingdom. And I was like, this, this feels good, right? Like this all feels solid. And I thought yeah. Jack Black as Bowser felt good, right? He's doing a voice. I it's... was surprised. It was, I was like, oh my God, this is Jack Black. Like yeah. he really embodied Yeah, Bowser. I wouldn't have fit, re remembered that he was Bowser if he hadn't been on before. Right. Like, because it didn't sound like Jack Black to me. And you can hear Whereas, it's you know, him if you're thinking about it, but, like, it's not just know, his voice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which I, I appreciate. Which was nice. It's like, I never remember that Steve Carell plays Gru in the Minions movies. Like, I just, you know. Yeah, he's doing a voice. When I realized that as well. Yeah. And I, 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 that's, and I think that's what you need. Yeah, because I... I that's very important to me. I would much rather have that than just, like, the... Uh, we're gonna just fill this with celebrities, right? Rather than like voice actors, because they have name recognition, and it's just like, does that matter? Like, do, like this is a movie that's made for kids. Are their parents gonna go to it because Chris Pratt is Mario? Like, no, that's we're going to this because I we have a kid that likes Maybe. Mario, or I like Mario, right? Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'd say well, like a low the percentage movie. of kids who are like really caring about Chris Pratt in this. It's more it, it they're there for Mario. Right. So speaking of which, right, we did hear Chris Pratt as Mario. We heard a little bit of Keegan Michael Key as Toad, um, who's also doing a, a very like he's it's a voice. It doesn't sound like him at great. all. He's great. Yeah, I liked his energy. I would not have known if yeah. I didn't know beforehand. Yeah, ag agreed. Mm -hmm. um, definitely know Mario is Chris Pratt, and I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely yeah. know that one. Yeah. It's, I fucking hate it so much. It's not good. <laughs> what do you think 
joking. And it's like, did you catch? You know what, though? Did like, you catch I the would, accent? I would rather. Yeah, yes, well, I can't I tell if it was like. I can't. <laughs> I can't tell if it was like really bad, or if he actually just sounded like that. Like I really just like I couldn't tell because I don't. I don't think we like heard enough of it. No, because in the I think beginning, he's doing a little bit of an accent. In the beginning, it just sounds like Chris Pratt, but then at the end, he mm-hmm. says something yeah. that sounds Brooklyn-y, and I'm like, okay, I don't mm-hmm. know. What's it? What's it? It's even like halfway the there. Yeah, they're they're in the booth with him, and they're like, yeah, 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 that's great. Can you actually put in less effort? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> great, print it. <laughs> I gotta say though, I I I would much rather have Chris Pratt. Just be Chris Pratt than butcher a Mario impression. But sure. like if it had to be Chris Pratt, I would rather it was Chris Pratt than Chris Pratt trying to do Mario. And that's the because thing I feel like he would just destroy it. That's why I just don't think it should have been a a celebrity, right? Like I think right. it. I think if you made every other voice like a famous person, and it's like Jack Black doing a voice, it's Keegan Michael Key doing a voice. Cool. I think with Mario, Mario is such an iconic character. He should have a voice that's his own voice and not. Charles Martinet is in the movie. They credit yeah. him. Yeah. He's doing. So a... What the fuck does he do? Yeah. I mean, like, that's the other thing you could have done. But then it's like, is that weird? Is it weird hearing Mario's Mario voice doing, like, a full, you know, film's worth of dialogue? I don't know. And, like, I think I would have rather had that, but. I would have, I I'm know. sure he would have changed it enough to make yeah. it appropriate for like longer bits of dialogue because he he is a voice actor. He I does just, a lot of this type of work. Yeah, does different things. For sure. So I would think he'd do he'd do just fine. So I, I I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I always compare this to like w- when I watch something like Detective Pikachu and stuff. I'm like. I'm really disappointed that Pikachu is just, I just see that and it's Ryan Reynolds. Like I can't not picture Ryan Reynolds doing all of those things. And I'm like, just get a voice actor. Who's going to do a voice. Um, like, like rocket raccoon. Right. I never think of Bradley Cooper when I'm watching rocket raccoon. Oh yes. my God, that's Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And exactly. That's Bradley Cooper. And, 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 and I'm just like, I don't want to not override the importance of the performance of the character. Exactly. And, and I think the more iconic the character, the more important it is to toe that line, you know, because yeah, don't actually like change. Like no. people wanted the original Mario voice. And, and it's just it's just like one of those things where it's like, I, I don't I don't understand the choice. Right. Where it's like, I, I don't think that this movie's um, success is at all positively impacted by having. You know, and again, right? Like, uh, remove the memification of of Chris Pratt, right? He is a very bankable movie star, right? And I think that the amount that people talk about how much they don't like him is more based on like what where you live on Twitter and stuff like that than it is based in like the mass audience of people that go and see movies right like yeah. if you look at it just in terms of like numbers and math he's one of the most bankable movie stars of all time so if you put him in and i think and ahead. i would argue that he worked for the lego movie like i, yeah. I didn't mind he was that fine role at all right i was and like yeah totally perfectly yeah, he fine he was good in that yeah he was and, and and that's the thing is right like i don't know we might hear this in the context of the film and think differently about it we heard two seconds of his fucking voice and it was weird I actually but, think we, we probably will, because I don't think you could have had Charles Martinet do Mario for the whole movie and have the script with the clearly the amount of dialogue that's in there just being Mario throughout the whole film. And that's I why I, they wanted that. I, what I think they should have done is I think they should have gone like the, the route they did with um, with recasting Spider-Man this time around. Right. And it's like, just pick somebody who's like nobody, like get somebody who's like a young you know, star who has chops, who's been in things and you know can act, right? Or voice act. But, like, I don't I don't want to but hear... But he's not mega. Yeah, like, because, like, even in the Discord earlier, we were chatting about it, and I was like, and I, I, I you know, I was like, low-key, I feel some kind of way about the fact that it's like you really couldn't get one Italian-American to, to play Mario or Luigi, the most recognizable Italian-American, they, listen, like, fucking... Not a single it- lining up in Queens to do this. There is not a single Italian-American in Brooklyn. Uh, are you kidding me? <laughs> so that, 
that aside, right? Because like I, I, that is a thing. That's a choice they made. Fine. And when I said that, um, Asobi was like, "Oh, like Danny DeVito would be awesome, right?" And it's like, honestly. I could see that being good, but also I'm like, yeah. I don't want to see. I feel like you'd have the same thing though. Right? Like, yeah, I don't want to hear Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito's face. Right? Yeah. I want to hear yeah. Mario. And, uh, and, and Danny DeVito yeah. only yeah. ever does Danny DeVito. Like you know, right. you watch Matilda. Danny DeVito is narrating the fucking thing, and he's also in the fucking movie somehow. Right. And like, he he is only ever Danny DeVito. I think if you, I don't actually think you need to get a nobody though. I think you just need to get someone who's a voice actor and not just a Hollywood actor. And you get someone who can do voices yeah, and I can mean, be Mario. That be works someone too. different. And so you're not looking at it and going, Oh, that's who is that? Like, I recognize that voice. Oh, it's Chris Pratt. And then throughout the whole film, you just see Chris Pratt's face in place of Mario. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I I think that would have been the way to go, honestly. And I honestly I think to to Chewie's point, and you know, like that could have been you could have just done that with Charles Martinet and had him iterate and do something different and not just do the voice that we know, right? Because it's like we've had other lot of interpretations of Mario where he talks, right? It's not is that the first time that's ever happened, but it's certainly the most visible. And yeah, I mean. It, Maybe the move is to watch the Japanese version with the subtitles, and you sure. haven't got a part of Chris Pratt's voice. That's not a, that's that's an idea. That's an idea. But I don't know. It's like I I wonder how we'll feel about it in context. You know, um, this is where it's like when you're actually watching the movie. You know, um, does it remain weird or is it weird right now because yeah. it's alien, right? And it's, I think it's probably going to be that. Because, yeah. like, I'm, I, I didn't have the same issue that you did, Chewie, with Detective Pikachu, but I'm not, like, I wasn't a massive Ryan Reynolds fan. The only thing I know is Pixel made us watch this creepy movie where he put heads in. Oh, that movie fucking we ruled! What the hell was that called? Oh, my God. All right, go Voices. Ahead. Yeah! Oh, my God! That movie was great! <laughs> Uh, yeah, Pixel made us watch that before, and he was like, yeah, you'll never be able to see see Pikachu now. You're just going to see Ryan Reynolds as this psychopath. And, like, I didn't. I didn't have that problem. Um, so uh, I feel like I can probably disassociate Chris Pratt and Mario, and I can just go in and enjoy the movie and, like, hopefully enjoy it. Because I love Detective Pikachu. I thought it was a weird concept that Pikachu was talking in a, in a movie when that was announced. But... Right. Like of all the I, I, I came to, to love that film. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that's true. It's a fun one. What were you going to yeah. say, Sierra? For all the things they could have done with the first live action Pokemon movie, it is funny that Pikachu is just straight up talking. Wild it. fucking choice. Yeah. Right? Where it's like. <laughs> talking. Yeah. It's like, dude, there yeah. are like fucking th what, 30 seasons of anime and manga and yeah. game where it's like, got, the kid, Pokemon, gym. Like. It would have been so easy to do that. <laughs> well, I guess it actually, I might have been more uh, apprehensive to a live action version where they have to cast like Ash, Brock, and Misty. Because, like, whereas, like, the main, like, kid in Detective Pikachu was, like, just some kid. Just, just some random kid, yeah. Any face, yeah. I would have been fine with them coming up with, like, a new character, though, like, and fulfill that same role. Or, like, they oh, could have yeah, just yeah, called yeah, the kid Red, yeah. you know, and been like, yeah, it's red and blue. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That was my immediate, like, when I walked out of Detective Pikachu, I was like, loved it. That was great. Such a fun time. Please make a series of Pokemon movies about a kid doing, yeah. yeah, doing the gym battles now. Because, like, mm -hmm. that would slap. That would absolutely slap. I heard they're doing a sequel, but I would also rather that. Isn't it weird that that movie like came out and was successful, and then it just feels like Hollywood's like, "Cool, we're done with that now." I know. Where it's like every they're other doing the Illumination thing, right? Because like they they did that deal with, with Come Universal. On. Wait, no, because like Universal owned Illumination, right? Yeah, but Pokemon Company yeah. operates outside of Nintendo. Right, so like right, Detective okay, Pikachu enough. was was made in collaboration with uh, the Pokemon Company and, um, I guess Universal, right? Wasn't it? Who did it? I can't remember. Oh, Legendary I, I Pictures. It was, with Universal. it was Legendary and Toho. Right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that. Maybe that just um, that relationship went sour or something, and they signed the deal with. 
Universal because obviously the Universal's doing the parks as well. Maybe they want to keep all all in house over there. Oh, and it was distributed by Warner yeah. Brothers. Okay, interesting. WB. Yeah. I don't know. I I thought it was a Universal movie, but yeah, obviously not. Yeah, it's a weird one. Weird that we never got another one, and that there doesn't really seem to be like. I think they were going to work on another one, but then st- they canceled stuff on it. And nobody really knows where the next, like, Detective Pikachu game, game is missing, either. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's really it's weird. On. It's really weird how that... Because even here, it says uh, on Wikipedia, it says uh, in 2019, months ahead of the release, there was co- confirmation of a sequel with a screenwriter. And then on May 3rd, 2021... Um, the star of the movie said, I think we just have to bury our hopes. I don't think it's going to happen. I really hope so, though. Yeah. Weird. Weird, mm-hmm. weird, really weird. No um, I don't know. But so I... That said, are you are you excited to watch the Mario movie, though? Yes. Yeah, yeah. honestly. I am. Me too. Because yeah. I feel like it's it's a very low stakes proposition, right? Because it's, I think it's the it's the exact same way... I felt going into the Sonic movie, right? Where I'm like, like it's either going to be like good enough, right? Where like, I think it's enjoyable, right? And there's like a degree of that, whether it's actually a good movie or if it's just an enjoyable enough popcorn movie that, you know, pushes some nostalgia buttons. That's fine. It's for kids, right? This is a movie made by a studio that makes movies for children. So like, we are not the target demographic, right? And I'm sure it will resonate with those kids. Great. And if it sucks, it'll at least be funny, I bet, like and memeable in a way where we're like, damn, we really saw that, huh? Oof. Oh, we've already got some golden memes out of the trailer, so I can't mm-hmm. wait to see what else we get from the movie. Here's my question. And I, I don't know, with Chewie and Steve, it might not be doable, but I, I, I can probably rope you into the Sierra. In the Discord, uh, everybody was joking. They're like, okay, it's the Flip Screen Games crew on the way to this movie, and everybody was in suits. I think we got to go in like suits and ties. We would treat this like a black tie oh, event. Oh, suits and ties. Are you in? I mean, <laughs> I was going to ask you if you wanted to go together. Let's do it. But, yeah. But like I'm saying, like, bla- like black tie though, you know, like. <laughs> well, let me think about it. <laughs> All right. Okay. I got a, I got a, I got a half commitment here. But we'll definitely we'll definitely go see it together. <laughs> okay. uh, but yeah, it's uh, I, I'm excited. I feel like I feel like it will be it'll be something, right? <laughs> I don't know if it'll be good, but it'll be something. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to ask before we um, before we do uh, wrap up here is, did anyone else think that it was weird? to see Mario's, like, face, like, fully animated. Yeah, it was, like, squishy. Yeah. It was, like, his whole yeah. face was squishy, and I'm not used to it, because, like, usually and there's only certain to... points that move. And he's really human eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. It's it's a little weird. It's a little weird. And, again, I think I'll get used to it in context, but seeing it, like, it's so much more animated than I am used to seeing Mario. Because, like, he usually has, like, three expressions, right? And it's like, oh, this is fucking strange. Even Toad, right? Where he's, like, he yells and he's like, no, 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 don't do it. And it's like, oh, my God. Like, why does he have so many muscles yeah. in his face? <laughs> have Have you seen him w- without his mustache that people have uh, photoshopped? No. Photoshopped his mustache off? Oh, my God. Yeah, the people over at Extremely Okay Games are just having a really great great day today because they photoshopped his mustache off and then they started work on putting the eyes onto baby mario so it's just it's truly truly horrible. can you send that to stuff. me on uh twitter so i can pull it up real quick before <laughs> yeah, yeah. we leave I want, I want to see that. <laughs> thank you steve steve dropped it in the discord kindly <laughs> it's okay. it's genuinely terrifying stuff Here's the so here's that one up here. Now let me get the baby Mario one. Oh no! I don't <laughs> like that at all. I love That's it. That's insane. Look at this. Oh no! <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. Yeah, he looks really odd without the, without the mustache. Yeah, like, you don't realize that the mustache is like the glue that's holding Mario's face together. The rest, without it, he's just naked. Well, I mean, when you think about it, right? Like in the original Mario design, like he doesn't have a face without a mustache. That's why he has a mustache. 
That is literally half his face. <laughs> it's, it's wild. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, this will be fun at the very least. April 7th, everybody. Get uh, get hype. And uh, we'll, um, we'll do a trailer breakdown for every one of these fuckers as they put them out. So. <laughs> and that was one of the weirdest things to me. It's like hearing that it's out April 7th and they know that and they're like prepped and ready and they're going to be distributing and stuff. But the, the movie, they kn- it's not done. Like, in video games, I feel like they'd have that date of April 7th, but everything would be done, and we'd be, like, in the localization process and, like, squashing bugs. But, like, they'd be able to play the thing and, like, watch it through. The animation's not even finished. There's no music that's been <laughs> been scored. That's they're still doing thing. They're still doing the lighting and stuff. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not even close. It's a Crazy. totally different production process. Yeah, sure. and it's so much more transparent, which I think is so interesting about movies. Like, they'll, like studios do that shit all the time, right? Where it's like, like whenever like they do one of those like Marvel events, they're like, "Yeah, here's the next uh, thirteen movies we're putting out in the next two decades," and it's like, "What the fuck? Like, why are you telling me all this? Like, <laughs> I don't." Right. It's so it's it's just they're so transparent. It's such a yeah. such a different rhythm, you know. But anyway. Uh, get hype. You heard it here first. Movie of the year, 2023. Uh, Super Mario Brothers movie. I don't make the rules. See it, see it at the Oscars. See it at the Oscars, <laughs> baby. I could see it there. I could, it, maybe, it might get you know nominated for like best animated like movie. The animation Mario. looks solid. Well, yeah. uh, here, here's my question. I got the vibe from the, our introduction to Mario here that we might be seeing Chris Pratt climb into a pipe in real life and then end up being Mario. I don't think it's that too, but I don't think there's going to be any of and that. Like, I don't think it'll be like, live action. You, but he's going to start well, in Brooklyn. Well, I'll tell you, it better not if be it me. does that, if it does that, Lego Movie specifically did not get nominated for animation because of the live action portions. That, that no, movie. really, that's such mm-hmm. bullshit. It is. It should have won. Yeah. Well, that was a good film. Nobody respects animation, so that's yeah. a whole other conversation that. Uh, Y'all aren't ready for for me to. We're too far into this episode for me to jump up on that soapbox. So we'll save that one for another day. <laughs> Let's talk about sandwiches for another twenty. Minutes. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I'm gonna end the show now. Thank you guys for joining us here in another episode of Nintendo Noise. If you want to write in with your thoughts about the Super Mario Brothers movie or why okay, sandwiches okay. need apps or whatever the What's fuck we talk. What's your favorite about? sandwich? <laughs> Comment below if you made it to the end of this episode on YouTube. Comment below your favorite sandwich. Okay, yeah, do that. Fuck it, do it. <laughs> we'll read them next week. Okay, tell me your favorite sandwich. <laughs> and if Pokemon doesn't have that sandwich in the game at launch, then it's a zero out of ten. All right. So, uh, flipscreen.games. That's the website. Become a Patreon supporter. Join the Discord. Come watch us on Twitch. However you get involved, we thank you for coming and uh, joining us on this wild ride of an episode. <laughs> so, great to have everybody back. It was nice to have the whole crew again. I know. All right. So, uh, for the for the crew, I've been Pete. She's been Sierra. He's been Steve. He's been Chewy. We've been Nintendo Noise. We'll see you next week, baby. <laughs>